بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ده so welcome back to solving the problems from uh, in chapter three uh, from three point thirteen and we are going to go on with some selected problems till about three thirty two so this is our video and this is what we are going to be taking so uh, just to go to three point thirteen so this is where we had stopped last time. And 3.13 tells us that uh, the, the, the TLV time weighted average, and we remember that TLV time weighted average, please just do consider that uh, the, the, the TLV time weighted average here, the, the, the one that I'm pointing on here, is just one value. It's not TLV minus TWA. I'm just mentioning that because many people look at it, oh, they are subtracting. There's not subtraction. It's is threshold limit value but however is it is calculated based on a weight average or on a time uh, basis over several times how to calculate this we already have taken that uh, we calculate this by taking the summation of the concentration multiplied by, by the time divided by eight which is our basis eight hours of one shift is our basis so if the tlv tw of a substance is 150 ppm a worker begins a work shift at 8 a.m. and he completes till 5 p.m. So that's about uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 9 hours. 9 hours, okay? A 1 hour lunch break is included between 12 to 1 where it can be assumed there's no exposure. Well, it can be assumed and we are going to look at the data if this, uh, if this is possible to assume that or not. Okay, so what's the data that we have? This is the data. And the data tells us that the worker ex uh, uh, the exposure, this is the worker exposure, but the question is, has the worker exceeded the TLV specification based on this data? So at 10 a.m. he had an exposure to 110 concentration and from 8.10, this is our assumption, from 8.10 till 9.05, okay, he had some kind of an an average concentration exposure between 110 and 130 so it's like he's walking in between uh, so between 110 and 130 it's like saying that well I have I, I, I have a 110 and 130 I have 120 I have 120 is the average concentration that was exposed uh, for a time between 810 to 905 so that is 55 minutes okay so and this is how we are going to calculate we're going to calculate the time and we're going to calculate the concentration that this person is exposed to exposed to and then we're going to multiply the concentration with the time and then we take the sum of all the concentration multiplied by time to get uh, to get the total and divide it by eight and compare it with the tlv compare it with the tlv okay i think the problem is now clear all we know what, what you need to do is, is to try to solve it and here I just try to do some kind I usually do this by hand by you one by one but since it's a very long table I just did it before in hand so uh, the TLV time with the average is based on eight hours of work and the TLV given for us as uh, the, 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 the given for us is 150 ppm so we need to be careful not to exceed that okay so that is our uh, our threshold limit value so what is, what is the equation of how to calculate the, the time weight average for the threshold limit value? It's 1 divided by 8 hours. So that's 8 hours, 1 divided by 8. So we need to convert everything to hours rather than minutes. Multiply by the concentration and uh, integration of the concentration. So this is something like, we already had seen this, uh, multiplying the concentration with the with that time 1, concentration with time 2, concentration with time 3, and so on divided by eight hours okay so again this is eight hours uh, so this is what we are going to do so looking at the table and th this is the data given to us so the data given to us is the start time and the ppm okay so this is the data that is provided uh, to us and what we are trying to calculate here we said that from 8 till 8 10 he was exposed because he actually he, he he went to work at eight so so we need to calculate from eight for so eight to eight ten we had an exposure time of ten minutes that is eight to eight ten 
So if you divide this by 60, so if you divide this by 60, you're going to get 0.17 hours. And then we're going to calculate the average and how we calculate the average. So it's the average time between 8 and 810. So it's the average of 110 and 110. So 110 and 110 average is 110. Uh, that's okay, simple. And then we multiply concentration with the time. So 110 multiplied by 0.17. So this is concentration and this is time. And this is equal to 18.17. Again, let's go and, and see what will happen from 810 to 905. From 810 to 905 is 55 minutes. Here's the 55 minutes. Divided by 60, we will get 0.92 hours. 92 hours. What about the average concentration? So he was at 810 exposed to 110 ppm and 905 he was exposed to 130. So an average of exposure, 130 plus 110 divided by two, it was 120. Okay, so that was the average. And if you multiply 120 with 0.92, which is C multiplied by T, we get 110.4. Last one, I mean not last one, we do this for all of it, but just to explain. Uh, so 9.05 till 10.07 is 62 minutes. So this person was exposed for 62 minutes, which is uh, if you divide by 60, uh, sorry, if you divide here by 60, 62 divided by 60, you will get 1.03 hours. Okay. And, and if you look at it for the average concentration, the average concentration for 130 and 143, because he was exposed from 9.05 to 10.07 with these cons two concentrations. And of course he was exposed to something in between as well. So I think the average of all those, this will be 136.5. And if you multiply 136.5 to 1.03, which is the amount of hours, or the, 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 the time of, uh, in hours, uh, of exposure, we will get 140.6. And so on, we are going to do this calculation for the whole table. We just come into the, the this area here, this area in which they said there was a break from 12 to one, but we already have in the data that at 12, 12, at 12, 12, uh, actually he was exposed to 142, <laughs> which means that there was an exposure. <laughs> there was an exposure. So just to keep things easy, he took a break at 12 o'clock as it was claimed and uh, and we just did an interpolation to find the value of of, of uh, this concentration which is between 142 and 162 and by that we, we calculated that from 11.20 to 12 we had 40 minutes of exposure which is divided by 60.67 hours and we took the average concentration, which is 146.6 plus 162, and we got 154. Okay, and, uh, get, and then we just multiply 154.67 to get 103.2. And we already know that at 142, we already have this information. So from 12 to 12, 12, it was 12 minutes, and we take the average of these two. And But here... Uh, if you can see, we could have taken the average of exposure, but since we are just assuming that from 12 to 1, it, there was no exposure, we just kept them as zero. And it's just an assumption that, that that's the truth. It, it should have been that he had a break from, from 12 to 1. And then you're going to continue numbering. So uh, at the end, we're going to get the summation of concentration with time. And this is equal to 1,100 and 79.4 and then we divided that by eight hours and this is what we have done here we divided by eight and when you divide by eight we got the answer to be 147.4 and luckily this number uh, the concentration is less is less than the tlv so 147.4 ppm is less than the threshold limit value which means that we are happy because our worker uh, is, 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 is safe. Is safe to that amount of exposure that we can see uh, in this problem. Okay, that was uh, great. So our worker is safe. And, uh, and now we need to, uh, to, 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 look up, uh, to look up for another problem. Uh, it's good. <laughs> I don't know what to say it's good or not. Like, uh, it's like we were waiting for, he's not safe, he's not safe, just to discover something. Then they tell us, no, he's safe, it's okay. So he was exposed to this 
amount of concentration if he was exposed to a little higher concentration he will pass the threshold limit value and then we are saying that he's exposed to a concentration that is beyond a higher concentration that will affect our body and and so on great so that that was the answer that we had for 313 313 and i think so that was a good problem that we have had went to so let's solve 314 <clears throat> let's solve for 314 and for uh, 314 for 314, we need to go to the problems. It says that air contains 4 ppm of carbon tetrachloride and 25 ppm of 1,1-dichloroethane. So I have two chemicals. And remember that we had an equation of how to calculate uh, the threshold limit value for two chemicals. And it is not the sum of the two threshold limit values. Remember that, right? So compute the mixture TLV the mixture TLV, threshold limit value, and determine whether this value is, ha, has been exceeded, okay? We want to know that it has been exceeded or not. So that is a simple uh, problem. Uh, if you go to the appendix G, actually, if you go to appendix G, you, you can obtain the TLV values, the TLV values for both of carbon tetrachloride and uh, dichloroethane, and you will have that there's 4 ppm of carbon tetrachloride uh, 4 ppm uh, of uh, th that is what we have okay 4 uh, ppm of tetrachloride with a tlv with a tlv let me write that with a tlv of 5 ppm with a tlv of 5 ppm Okay, so this is what we have. Again, what you're talking about, you're talking about air contains 4 ppm of tetrachloride and 25 ppm. So these are the concentrations that we have now. Okay, the TLV we're getting from appendix G. Okay, so that, that just this is just to highlight. So we also have a 25 ppm of 1,1 dichloroethane, dichloroethane. And what is the TLV that we have obtained from Appendix uh, G? It is a TLV of 100 ppm. Okay, so we obtain this from Appendix G. Okay, great. Uh, now, with this information that we have, uh, do we consider that these values that we have, 4 ppm and 25 ppm, is, is, is exceeding that the, the limits or not so the the mixture tlv the way how we calculate the mixture the mixture tlv we want to know how to calculate the mixture tlv the mixture tlv which is the tlv mix the equation is equal to the summation of the concentrations divided by the summation of the concentrations divided by their threshold limit values. And this will be the summation of the concentrations is 4 and 25. Okay, it's 4 plus 25. And if we divide that by each one, so this the, the one which has the 4 ppm of carbon tetrachloride, it has the TLV of 5, so it's 4 divided by 5. And the other one, it has the concentration of 25 and the TLV is 100. And if you just do your calculations, the answer will be 27.6, 27.6 ppm. Okay, that's great. And, and just look that if this exceeds or not. So what did we say? We said that, we said that since, since 25 plus for the concentration that we have is equal to 29 ppm which is greater than the TLV mix that we have and here the TLV mix is, is, is 25.76 ppm because the summation is greater than the TLV mix then we, we, we would decide or we would decide and say that the TLV has 
been exceeded. Okay, so in this case, the TLV had been exceeded, and uh, we need to consider that. Okay, so that was the solution of how uh, how to calculate uh, the, the TLV mix and to know that if it is exceeded or not. So let's go now to the next problem that we have, and the next problem that we are going uh, to to solve together will be uh, three point three sixteen three sixteen. So I'm going to leave 315 as an assignment because we, we have solved something that is similar to it. And uh, uh, we are going to solve 316 uh, together. So now we are uh, trying to solve uh, 316. And here's 316. So Sachs is just one of the authors. Uh, so he provided the following working equation for determining the dilution uh, air required, uh, requ air requirements resulting from evaluation to a solvent. Um, yeah, I think so that is a good question. Uh, I was just thinking that if this is a good question or not. Where CFM is feed cube per minute, so we have a CF cube, uh, cube per minute uh, available. And, uh, and, and since we have this information, you know that uh, the, the way how to, we can get the, the, the amount uh, of the mass flow rate, which is QM. Show that this equation is the same as equation 39. I knew that was <laughs> equation 39. What assumptions are inherent in this equation? Uh, and, and we have some kind of uh, uh, data provided for us for benzene and toluene, the molecular weights. And the reason we have the molecular weights and specific gravities uh, so that we can calculate from uh, the molecular weights the, 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 the K value, uh, I mean the diffusion coefficients, and we also can get from the specific gravity, we can get the value of, 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 of the density. Okay, so uh, uh, whatever, I mean, uh, if you just want to do it, we are going to do it. Uh, okay, so we are going to do uh, a problem uh, 316. I thought that it was a more interesting problem uh, to be solved, but never mind. Uh, we, we always learn from what we have in front of us. It could be very useful. Everything is useful to solve. So from equation 39, we show we are just e recalling our equation, which is the main equation that we have was CPPM is equal to QM into the universal, con universal constant into temperature into that the K value for the mixing into the ventilation rate multiplied by the pressure multiplied by the molecular weight and that is multiplied by 10 to the power 6 which makes it uh, a PPM thing. Okay, uh, so then how to calculate if you want to solve for QV which is the feed Q per minute. Okay, so we want, we want to solve for QV, which is the ventilation rate. And QV here is going to be QM. And if you can see, just QV goes up here. Now we're bringing CPPM down. So there's nothing really great about that. So that is like that into that small K uh, multiplied by CPPM into PM multiplied by 10 to the power 6. Okay, now if you just want to substitute, say that I want to know what is the ventilation rate, what is the ventilation rate, uh, considering the threshold limit values of the CPPM. Okay, so uh, this is what I'm trying to do here. I'm saying what is the ventilation rate, uh, considering that now CPPM is at the threshold limit value. So I, I want to, uh, to, to, to identify that ventilation rate, to make the C, uh, to, to control it always around that threshold limit value or beyond that threshold limit value. So we're going to substitute CPPM instead of I'm going to substitute the TLV and we already have the TLV uh, information. We have the other information, which is the temperature is equal to 500, and 30 uh, Rankin and we have the pressure was given to us 
atmospheric pressure, I think so, it was a 14.7 psi a. We have the inverse of constant is equal to 10.73. And uh, the, 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 the amount that you're going to get for the mass flow rate, it will have the units of pound mass per minute. Okay, uh, so what you need to do now, we are going to calculate our QV. That is as a threshold limit value, and we're going to multiply this. Uh, what is our threshold limit value, just to remember? Uh, okay, we don't have the threshold limit value, so we will just keep it as a, uh, as a variable there. Okay, so QV is equal to QM multiplied by RG, which is 10.73 into 530, uh, that is about a 70 degrees Fahrenheit, the normal temperature that we usually live with, uh, under uh, divided by K, divided by TLV, substituted in place of CPPM, multiplied by the P, which is 14.7 PSI A, multiplied by the molecular weight. And, and if you do this, you're going to get these numbers. You're going to get 3.87 multiplied by 10 to the power 8. Uh, and, and, and this has the units of pound mass uh, per minute. Of course, that's not only the equation. This is divided by the other variables that we have, K into TV, TLV into M. And actually, if you just have a look, this looks exactly <clears throat> like the equation that we have here. We have exactly the equation here. So, so this guy or that company that shows the dangerous properties of industrial materials, <clears throat> it shows that and, and, and it, it looks like they brought it from, wow, how did he get that equation? So how did he get this equation? He simply substituted that equation in our main equation, which is the CPPM is equal to QMRGT divided by KQVPM multiplied by 10 to the power 6. So that was the main equation they relied on. Only what, uh, only what did that person or that company did is that they calculated QV. They calculated QV and they have considered that CPPM is at the threshold limit value. And that was the equation. And voila, we got it and we have our equation there. So that was the solution 316. I hope that you gained something nice about it. Uh, I knew that we could have send, uh, said uh, many interesting stuff here. Uh, 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 interesting in the sense that, uh, uh, did anyone get got hurt? Uh, so this is the, the way how sometimes we think, sorry for that. Uh, but uh, that's what I meant by uh, sometimes interesting to some people. Well, so that is the equation. We just proved that we could obtain the same equation that was obtained for that person there. Uh, great, beautiful. Uh, so now we are going to solve for 317. Uh, 317, so we already solved 316. Uh, going to 317. <clears throat> now 317 to 322, it is just telling us that you're going to use this information for all the problems that are coming down there, which are all about benzene and toluene. Why? Because we need the molecular weights and we are also going to be using the threshold limit value. So all of these uh, values you're going to be using. And if you can remember uh, how to calculate the saturated pressure, we can calculate the saturated pressure. We can calculate the saturated pressure by how we can calculate the saturated pressure by substituting okay by substituting a and b and t from the tables and we have a b and c from the tables after substitute a b and c and at a certain temperature we can calculate what is the vapor <clears throat> what is the saturation vapor pressure in millimeters mercury uh, so uh, and t should be substituted in kelvin so, so on, we we can know from all this information we have TLV, we have the molecular weight, we have the specific gravity in which we can calculate even the density, and we have what we have already the temperature because we are substituting that, and we have the saturated vapor pressure. So we have all the information that we need for that for the equation of CPPM. So let's solve now three seventeen. So solving for 317, compute the concentration in PPM of the saturated vapor. 
with air above a solution of pure toluene. Okay, so we are talking about toluene, uh, pure toluene. Now, we want to complete the concentration in ppm of the equilibrium vapor with air above a solution of 50% toluene and benzene. So we are talking about pure toluene, and then we are talking about toluene and benzene. The temperature is 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and the total pressure is one atmosphere. So we know the temperature, so we can call it the pressure, the saturated vapor pressure. And I, I know that the pressure that we want to sub substitute in that CPPM equation is not the same, that is the pressure, okay? And it's not the, the, the saturated vapor pressure, but we will come to that. We already have the total pressure. Okay, that's good. Okay, so how we are going to go around that equation? So in 317, uh, 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 it's good to recall, uh, 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 we, we, we can calculate the CPPM uh, through a different route. So uh, we want to calculate the CPPM. However, we have a different route for that. Again, what does the problem say? Con con compute the concentration in PPM, okay, of the saturated vapor. So we want to calculate the, uh, the concentration uh, in PPM units. And, and, and usually the way that we used to calculate, if you can remember, uh, that was our way of depending on the release that we have of the mass flow rate and the universal constant and the temperature and the mixing value uh, multiplied by the ventilation rate into the pressure, uh, the absolute pressure into the molecular weight. Well, is there another route of how to calculate it? Of how to calculate it? Yes. There is another route of how to calculate this. And let's see what do we have from information so that we can calculate calculate it. So uh, I'm going to show that to you. So if we have a temperature of uh, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about, this is in Rankin, and this is in Kelvin, and the one that we are given is in Kelvin to calculate the saturated vapor pressure. So for toluene, so for toluene, limpy sat, Limpy sat is equal to, if you can remember the equations A minus B over C plus T. And if you substitute the values here, you'll get the answer as 16.0137 minus 3096.52 divided by minus 53, minus 53.67. So let me make that clearer, minus 53.67 plus 300 and uh, the answer is going to be 3.433. So th this is the answer for what? For the lin. So calculating PSAT, PSAT is equal to the exponential of 3.433 and we get the answer in millimeter mercury, 31, 31.3 millimeter mercury. Now that is the saturated pressure. And I don't know if you could recall from Dalton's law, if you recall from Dalton's law that the P saturated vapor pressure is equal to the mole fraction multiplied by the total pressure. And actually this means that I can calculate the mole fraction that I have here, which is P sat over P. And if you divide by P sat over P, and both of them are in millimeter mercury, uh, this will give me a 0.412 number. Sorry, that is 0 0.0412, 0 0.0412. And, and, and simply, you see, you see how is that done? Simply what we are going to do, we are going to multiply this by 10 to the power 6, and we are going to get our value in ppm. So this is as simple as it is. So we are just calculating the percentage per million, or sorry, the parts per million, which just reflects the mole fraction that we have here. So our CPPM, now our CPPM is equal to 0 0.0412 into 10 to the power 6, which is equal to 4.12 into 10 to the power 4 ppm. Uh, and I don't know if, uh, if you can remember from the last time that we, there is a way of how to, cons to convert the CPPM to milligrams per meter cube, uh, something like a concentration in terms. Uh, yes, we do have this, but this is if you want to solve 
for, for that, if you want need to convert, we, but we don't need to convert in this sense. Now, let's go to part B, where we are trying to look at toluene and benzene at about 300 Kelvin. And, and, and uh, we already calculated the one for toluene, and now we have toluene and benzene. I just want to calculate the, 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 the CPPM for benzene uh, or the PSAT. First, I'm going to calculate as PSAT for benzene. So this is equal to A. This is the equation. Lim PSAT is equal to A minus B over C minus 52.36 plus T. This is equal to 4.64. And then you're going to calculate PSAT, it will be 103.6 millimeter mercury. Okay, now because we have two substances, so we have two substances, so I don't know if you also can recall Raoult's law. Raoult's law, which, which mentions the, 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 the partial pressure thing, that the, the, the total pressure is equal to the, the, the partial pressure, again, the total pressure, is equal to the pressure of toluene plus the pressure of benzene and how to calculate uh, the how to calculate the pressure of toluene okay uh, total looks like toluene huh? i'll write that as total so that you don't get confused okay so uh, so pressure of toluene uh, let me put you here uh, it just makes me more comfortable and to make sure that you're not confused so if I want to calculate the pressure of toluene, okay, the pressure of, of toluene is equal to, that's from Dalton's law and uh, uh, Raoult's law, sorry, is equal to 0.5 multiplied by 31.3 millimeter mercury. And this will be equal to 15.65 millimeter mercury. Okay, great. So I have 15.65. And then if you want also to calculate the one for benzene, it's also 50%. So that will be equal to, again, X into P sat, and that is equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 multiplied by 103.6. And the 103.6 is the value that I just got here. And that 13.13, the value that I got earlier, uh, just to recall this into 103.6 to millimeter mercury and the answer will be 51.8 millimeter mercury great so now if i want to calculate the the, the x toluene the partial uh, the, the, the 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 mole fraction that i have it is equal to the partial pressure okay so that is the partial pressure divided by the total pressure Okay, so oh, you already know this. So that is 15.6 divided by 760, and this will give me 0 0.0205. And actually now, if I want to show, I already know this, if I want to show this in, 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 uh, uh, in uh, PPM, we just need to multiply by 10 to the power 6. Okay, so I'll keep that now. I'm going to do this, do this in a moment. So an X for benzene, is equal to pressure of benzene divided by the total pressure and this is equal to 51.8 divided by 760 and this is equal to 2.0682 and here now if I just want to show my concentration in ppm and the cppm for, for toluene the cppm for toluene is going to be 20,000 okay just to sorry so that would be 20,500 ppm and the concentration in ppm for benzene okay ppm ppm for benzene is going to be 68,200 68,200 ppm and that is our answer for this, the second part of this problem. And I, I, I think so this was a good, a good exercise for us to see how to do our calculations. 
So that was the solution of this problem and I hope that you have gained a lot from that problem. So the next problem that we are going to try to solve here is problem 320. And problem 320 is, is very interesting. And I can, you can see that I've selected a problem that has a lot of details in the, inside it. And, and, and it will give us the understanding, uh, the critical understanding, if I would say, of the details that is with this, within this problem. So let us go ahead uh, with the problem. Benzene and toluene form an, form an ideal liquid mixture. A mixture composed of 50% benzene, which means 50% toluene, is used in a chemical plant. A temperature is 80 degrees Fahrenheit and the pressure is one atmospheric pressure. All the information I do have, and I already calculated earlier if I have these temperatures. I'm not sure if we, we ah, okay, we select the 70 degrees. Okay, so we need to calculate again the PSAT. And from PSAT, and that pressure that we have, we can calculate the mole fraction and then we can call it, calculate the CPPM. Okay, so we, we already can see that how to do our calculations. And then we're going to calculate the temperature, the mixture TLV, which is again from the equation uh, that we have, which is the summation of the concentrate, concentration divided by the summation of the concentration, uh, individual concentration divided by the TLV uh, of that concentration. And then determine the evaporation rate, which is QM. And then we are going to calculate a drum within a certain problem. We are going to come to that later. So that we don't want to just overwhelm you with all the requirements. So what do we have here? We have, uh, the, we, we have the mixture of benzene and toluene. And this mixture is like 50% and 50%, okay? So we know that. Uh, to get the TLV values from Appendix G, from Appendix G, uh, we can know that the, the TLV for benzene, okay, so let me write here the TLV for benzene is 0.5 ppm, 0.5 ppm, and the TLV for toluene will be 20 ppm. So these are the values that I have. So how to calculate the mixture? The mixture, the TLV mix, is equal to the summation of CI divided by the summation of CI divided by TLVI. Where do, do we have the concentration, the individual concentration of each one? No, we don't have it. What we have is the TLV values. And what we have is the 50% where we can calculate the partial pressures. And of course, we can calculate our, uh, our mole uh, fractions, which are the CPPMs by multiplying by 10 to the power 6. Okay, so I can see that it is clear that how we are going to solve this problem. So from the data provided, that was in the, in the, in the problems, uh, data provided for the values of A, B, and C, we can calculate for benzene, the saturated vapor pressure, which is equal to A minus B over C, which is minus 52.36, plus T, okay? And uh, we can calculate the, 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 the limb PSAT, and this will be, uh, I'll just do that calculation directly. So PSAT is, a, is going to be equal to 104 millimeter mercury. And similarly for toluene, we are going to have limb PSAT is equal to 16 minus 3096 divided by minus 53.67 plus T, and then we are going to get the value of PSAT, which is equal to 330.9 millimeter mercury.
okay I, 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 I know you know that but just uh, if, you, if you're asking what was T value T value was 300 Kelvin that is given in the problem okay 300 Kelvin okay so we have now we found that the the the, the, the saturated pressures and now you're going to calculate the partial pressure so what you're going to do now you are going to compute the partial pressures and in computing the partial uh, pressures, uh, this is what you're going to do for benzene P1 is equal to, we have 50% as benzene and we just multiply it by 104 and we're going to get a 52 millimeter mercury of a partial pressure and toluene, this is toluene, so we are going to call that P2 I'm just trying to make the small p, p2, because it's a partial pressure. Uh, it's just a notation. So that is equal to 0.5 multiplied by 30.9, which is equal to 15.5 millimeter mercury. Okay, so we know the partial pressure. And, and we already know that this is given like the total pressure is 760 millimeter mercury which is one atmospheric pressure and by that we can calculate the cppm for toluene and i'll call uh, the one is for the one for benzene sorry one is for benzene so c1 is equal to 52 partial pressure divided by the total pressure and i'm going to multiply this by directly by 10 to the power 6 and i'm going to get the c the the, the cppm which is 6.84 into 10 to the power 4 ppm and here I want to calculate for toluene it will be 15.5 uh, millimeter mercury divided by 760 millimeter mercury multiplied by 10 to the power 6 and the answer will be 2.03 into 10 to the power 4 ppm so after we have obtained the concentrations, I think we are ready now to calculate our TLV mix. So our TLV mix, which is equal to the summation of CI over the summation of CI over TLVI. This will be equal to the summation, which means the summation is 6.84 into 10 to the power 4 plus 2.03 into 10 to the power 4. And this is divided by 6.84 into 10 to the power 4 divided by its TLV value which is 0.5 for benzene. If you just want to recall this, I'll just go up. So the TLB values, where are they? Okay, so that was that was T TLV for benzene, 0.5, and the TLV for toluene is 20. Okay, so continuing solving our problem, so that was 0.5 plus the one for toluene, which is 2.03 to 10 to the power four, and the TLV was 20. And now the TLV mix was is 0.643 ppm. Okay, it's 0.643 ppm. Now looking at this value, 0.6343 ppm, uh, does that exceed, or, or let me say, it does my uh, total concentration exceed the TLV mix or not? Uh, if you can recall that if it exceeds the TLV mix, we have a problem. And actually, if you look at uh, at the total concentration here, it definitely exceeds. You're you're looking at you're looking at the concentration of 10 to the power four, right? And and here we just have 0.643. So definitely it exceeds, and we have we have something that we need to consider here that that, that could be a problem. So if we if we now to to just go. To the first part, part A, it said determine the mixture TLV, which is the TLV mix. We did that. We found it. And now it wants us to determine the evaporation. It wants us to determine the evaporation rate per unit area for this mixture. <laughs> so how to calculate the evaporation rate? Uh, if, if you can recall from the equation that we had, we had CPPM. Uh, now I'm, I'm just saying part B, okay? So CPPM is equal to QM into RG into T. So that's my main equation. Over K into QV multiply by the pressure uh, and multiply by the molecular weight, 
Okay, so uh, that, that, that is the equation that I have. Uh, we, can, uh, we, we, we can have uh, a better representation of that equation. It, it, it depends on what and depends on uh, how I'm trying to find the QM. And uh, if remember that QM was as, as a function of, uh, that is the small k, just sorry, just not to confuse you. So that is the mixing k. Uh, if you remember the equation for QM, uh, which was equal to QM is equal to MKA. Uh, I, I hope you can remember this. And this is the big K, which is the, the diffusion uh, coefficient, or sorry, it is the mass diffusion constant. Uh, which is mka into p sat uh, divided by rg uh, multiplied by t and then we are, we are going to somehow now do what we are going to substitute this qm here so i already have the equation for qm and i'm going to substitute the qm here and uh, and if because I, I already have the saturated vapor pressures okay so this is why i can substitute Q, qm here uh, and, and, and have a better equation. But wait, wait for a moment, wait for a moment. What I'm trying to calculate here, uh, what, 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 what the question is asking me is that it's my evaporation rate per unit area. So it's asking me to find out QM. It's asking me to find QM. And rather per unit area, it's telling me that it wants to find QM over A, okay? So which means that I may not need at all that equation to substitute. I may need this to substitute sometime later, but if this is the requirement, QM over A, I just can get it from this equation here. So QM over A uh, is equal to the M value. It is equal to the M value multiplied by K. And this is multiplied by uh, the, the P saturation. And I know the P saturation here, we can uh, do some kind of arrangement but multiplied by the mole fraction because uh, it, we have two components here rather than one component okay so we are going to consider uh, we are going to consider this uh, so this is the equation that I'm going to use okay so that is the equation that I'm going to use and and uh, the, and if you just go back if you want to have a look so this is like from equation 312 okay from equation 312 uh, so going back so that's the equation now we know the molecular weight okay so let, let, let me do this in red I, I just feel better in doing it in red okay so we do have the value of the molecular weight we do have the value of universal constant temperature is just the temperature and we do have the value of the, uh, the saturated pressure. And, I, and I, as I said, this is the saturated pressure if you're talking about just one component. But if you're talking about two components, I need to multiply by Xi here. So, and then it's going to be Pi, okay? So don't worry about that. I'm just including it. I think I'm going to include it if, you, if you're really uh, thinking about, oh, I have two components. Eh? So th this is how it's done. And so I'm just adding them, okay? Xi and Pi. So we have these values, we have all of these values, except that value here that I'm worried about, which is the K. <clears throat> so we need to calculate K now for both benzene and uh, toluene. And the value of K, if you can recall that K is equal to K naught, multiplied by M naught divided by M to the power one over three, so that was the equation that uh, th th that we we got to, and we said that for water, K naught is 0.83 uh, centimeter per second. Okay, and the molecular weight of water is 18. And now, if I'm talking about benzene, so so if I'm talking about benzene, so that will be 18 divided by the molecular weight, which is 78 of benzene, 78.11 to the power one over three. And, uh, and, and just to make things permanent, I'm going to multiply this by 60 seconds per one minute. And I'm going to have the answer uh, to be as we, it just came to be one. So it will be one, one feet per minute, one feet per minute. Similarly, uh, if I go and try to calculate for toluene, 
uh, a file type to calculate for Tolween. And Tolween, uh, a k is equal to again 0.83 multiplied by 18 divided by 92.13, which is the molecular weight to the power 1 over 3. That's 18. And uh, if you multiply this by just 60 seconds uh, per, per minute, okay, 60 seconds uh, per uh, minute, just to take that to minutes, it would be 0 0.949 feet per minute. Okay, beautiful. So I got the values of K. So again, this is the capital K. Okay, so I got the values of K that I have here. Uh, so what I need to do now, just to get the values of K, uh, so I got the values of K here and what I need to do I just need to calculate now the mass flow rate I need to calculate the mass flow rate which is QM over A per area so for benzene for benzene QM over area we already have this equation I, 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 I think I'm going to write the equation again because it just makes me more comfortable for you to see everything so it's equal to that mk uh, mk into p saturation uh, the, the, the saturated uh, the saturated pressure okay so that is m molecular weight multiplied by k which is the, uh, the the mass diffusion constant multiplied by the p sat okay so multiplied by the p sat and the the, the saturated pressure uh, the, 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 that we have and how to, did we get the saturated pressure if you just go above little bit it's good to remember everything how did we get the saturated pressure we already got the saturated pressure to be 52 okay we got the saturated pressure from that lin a minus b over t plus c equation so we have the saturated pressure to be 52 since we are now we are talking about uh, every one by itself so we need to multiply this by xi so this equation will be 78.11 multiplied by uh, multiplied by one feet uh, uh, should i include the uh, well i'm not th i don't think so i'm going to include the units just to keep it simpler multiplied by 52 over 760 so that is the partial pressure that over the total pressure divided by the r value uh, multiplied by the temperature 540 so what was the qm then the QM was found out to be 1.35 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 2 uh, pound mass pound mass per feet cube minute. Okay. Uh, I think so. It's not feet cubes. Feet square because it's, it's area, so it's feet square. So it's pound mass per minute, which is the mass flow rate per area. Okay, great. And now to calculate for 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 Tolween. For Tolween QM over area is going to be equal to 92.13 multiplied by 0.949 multiplied by 15.5 over 760 divided by uh, 0.732 uh, multiplied by 4, 540. Okay, uh, so, so that will be 4.52. <coughs> Multiply by 10 to the power minus 3. Again, pound mass, pound mass per feet square minute. Okay, great. And if I want to calculate the total evaporation rate, which could be from toluene and benzene, so that is the summation of, of, of both 13.5, uh, that, so that's 1.35, 1.35 into 10 to the power minus 2 plus 4.52 into 10 to the power minus 3. Uh, this will be equal to 18 into 10 to the power minus 3 pound mass per feet square minute. Great. So, so that, uh, that, uh, there's one assumption here that we should consider. We, we, did, we did calculate all that, but we are assuming that also the composition did not change that the composition doesn't change doesn't change during evaporation okay so there is some kind of also an assumption that the composition still remains as a 50 percent 
Great, so that was part two. That was part two of how to calculate QN, of how to calculate the total QN. After I was able to calculate the total QN, after I was able to calculate the total QN, now I can substitute the QN in the generic uh, form of the CPPN. And this generic form of the CPPM that I have here, it is requested in part C. And let's see part C. So part C tells me a drum with a two inch diameter bung is used to contain the mixture. So we know the container is two inch diameter, so we can find the area. Determine the ventilation rate. So we want to find the ventilation rate, which is QV, to maintain the vapor concentration bef below the TLV, okay? So we want to maintain it below the TLV. So I would assume that we can substitute the TLV mix that I have. Uh, oh no, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. The ventilation quality within the vicinity of this operation is average. So uh, why did it say that the ventilation quality is average? Because there is a K value that we can calculate uh, from uh, if, if we want to say that the vicinity of this operation is average. If you want it excellent, it will be a different K value. Okay. So what do we have here? Uh, we have, we can calculate the, the CPPM, but before we calculating the CPPM, uh, should I calculate the uh, CPPM and now? Yeah, let, let me calculate the CPPM. So we already have the QM, which is 1.8. We already obtained this uh, into 10 to the power minus two. And what we are trying to do here, we are just trying to do some kind of conversion stuff uh, t taking uh, things easier here. We have the universal constant, but j just to do some kind of 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 some uh, kind uh, of of uh, before I go to that, I I'm going to multiply this by area. Okay, so what I have here is this is QM by area, right? So I I want to multiply this QM multiply by area. So I have only QM. I want to substitute QM here. Because the, the, the answer that we have obtained here, it is QM divided by area. We already have the area, which is pi d square, which is pi, the diameter, which is two square inch square divided by four. And just to convert that, that we have for every uh, one foot square, we have 144 inch square. So we cancel the two inch square here that we have. Okay, so this was the QM part. Okay, that was the QM part that we have. And if you want to multiply it by R, R is 0 0.7302. And we are going to multiply by the temperature. So the temperature is 540. And then we multiply this 10 to the power 6 as given in the equation. And this is all divided by the KQ uh, V into PM. I'll just keep the K value. I'm going to come to it. Uh, and for the ventilation rate, uh, uh, we need to multiply this by the ventilation rate. Uh, what was the ventilation rate? We want to find the ventilation rate. So this CPPM, this CPPM will come down here and QV will go up there. So we want to find this ventilation rate based on what? Based on the threshold level value mix. And the threshold level value mix we find at the top there if you recall, was 0.643 ppm, okay? And multiplied by the pressure, the pressure is one atmospheric pressure. So that will be multiplied by one atmospheric pressure. So that is one uh, atmospheric pressure. Uh, and, and, and this is what we have for the equation. So we were left with the molecular weight. Okay. Uh, uh, here the molecular weight we need to consider the molecular weight to, to calculate the average molecular weight and calculating the average molecular weight that we have so the molecular weights are if i can remember they are 52 so let's go look at the molecular weight uh, sorry for that so going to the molecular weight at the top let's see the molecular weights where are the molecular weights where are the molecular weights? Because I forgot just the uh, what were the molecular weights. Uh, okay, 
well, uh, what do we have here? Uh, uh, the, the molecular weights, uh, I think 78.11. My God, okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> I, we already have it. So I just wanted to show it to you to the, so that you've become more comfortable. Uh, okay, okay, so uh, you see the values here, the molecular weight, 78.11 and 92.13 okay so we have them here so these are the average molecular weights that we have so what what do you want to do here we want to calculate the average molecular weight which is the mole fraction to the molecular weight plus the mole fraction into the molecular weight and the mole fraction into the molecular weight it is like that so it's, it's the 52 which is the partial pressure of the over the over that total pressure of adding all both of them as a mole fraction, multiplying it by 78.11, which is the molecular weight, plus the 15.5 uh, partial pressure, divided by, again, the summation of 52 plus 15.5, and we multiply this by the molecular weight. So what did we substitute for the average, uh, for the molecular weight? The average molecular weight. Okay, so what you're going to obtain here we are going to obtain the value 296 divided by K. Okay, 296 divided by K. And, and, and for an average value, for an average value, uh, as it was mentioned uh, in, the, uh, in the problem, K is equal to 1 over 8. And if you want to know where did I get this information, I got it from table 315. And based on that, uh, based on that, I can uh, calculate my my QV value, my QV value, which is the ventilation. And if, so QV is equal to, if you substitute here 1 over 8, so that will be 2961 multiplied by 8, and the answer will be 23,690 feet Q per minute. And, and through experience, and we already had shown you some numbers of ventilation, uh, this number is very large, is very large, and probably, probably not practical. Okay, so we need to have a solution for this problem. Our ventilation rate, uh, if you use a ventilator, that number is very high and it's very difficult to satisfy. So this is what we have for problem uh, 320. I hope that you have gained a lot from problem 320. The, the main idea, uh, the, the idea is that uh, how to calculate the CPPM and then the TLV mix. And then we use the TLV mix so that we can calculate that, okay, the, the ventilation rate. And because we have a mix, and that was the challenge, then we have a mix, how to calculate the average molecular weight and from that mix, how do we calculate the PSAT in the, in the term to calculate QM? And, uh, and here the QM is a summation of both Qs. The, so that is the idea that we have, okay? The, uh, I want to sum both the saturated pressures together uh, to, or considering each one by itself and then adding the QM, the two QMs. So this is the solution for 320. And I hope that you have uh, learned uh, from what we have uh, solved so far. Uh, uh, so now we are going to solve uh, the next problem uh, in a moment. Uh, there had been question by students before going to the next question and uh, and uh, the, the question was about about they were asking me about the uh, where's the number here? Sorry for that. They were asking me about uh, here, this is the uh, we said that we're multiplying here by the P sat, right? Uh, and it is the P sat. Uh, if you are multiplying the P sat, uh, of course, it's the saturated pressure. But what did we say? That we said that we were we are calculating for a certain item, for a certain I, either toluene or benzene. So we are going to take the one specific for only benzene. And how do we do that? We multiply it by Xi. So simply we're saying that we're going to calculate that partial pressure uh, that we do have. Uh, 
the saturated partial pressure uh, or we calculate the partial pressure based on the saturated vapor pressure so we are going to multiply xi into p sat what was the value that we got for x pi multiplied by p sat is 15.5 okay why are we dividing by 760 so that was the question that i got and the reason we are dividing by 160 is just we are converting it to millimeter uh, to atmospheric pressure because this is in millimeter mercury and we divided by 760 millimeter mercury so that we can convert it to atmospheric so that is the only whole idea about about this part here so i just wanted to clarify this part uh, for some students okay so where are we now uh, so where are we now so now we are trying to solve problem <clears throat> 321 321 and I, I think we have solved a good number of problems and uh, we are getting a lot of what you are trying to learn here. So 321 uh, says that a drum contains 42 gallons of toluene if the lid of the drum is left open. Oh, it's left open that means it is going to evaporate. Is this dangerous or not? So the lid diameter is 3 feet. The cont it contains 42 grams per toluene. Determine the time required to evaporate all of the toluene in the drum. So how much would it take to evaporate all of that toluene in the drum? The temperature is 85 degrees Fahrenheit. <clears throat> the, uh, estimate the concentration of toluene in ppm near the drum. If the local ventilation rate, so there is a ventilation rate. If the local ventilation rate is 1000 feet cube per minute and the pressure is one atmospheric pressure. And I also sh should consider that, okay, I know the ventilation rate. What about K? Is it well mixed? or not because it could mean that the answer would be different if it's not well mixed okay so these are the information that i have for 321 so let's start i have the problem 321 so what it wants me to calculate it wants me to calculate the uh, let me see again uh, so it, it, it is asking us about determine the time required to evaporate all of the toluene so I know the evaporation rate, which is QM, and I already know the mass. I know this is the volume, but I can't call it the mass. So if I know the mass and the, 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 the QM, the evaporation mass flow rate, I can get the time required for that. So I can do this. And then the, the, the popular CPPM equation that I can calculate for the second part. So I'm calculating now QM. As I said, so that I can use it with the mass later. So this is equal to mk into a into p sat divided by the inverse constant with the temperature. And if I want to calculate the k, because I I do have molecular weight, I have Rg, I have T, I have the area, and I have the saturated pressure. Uh, do I have? Yeah, I already have it from the previous question, right? Uh, and I can calculate now I need to calculate K so K is equal to this is the capital K is equal to K naught into M naught over M to the power 1 over 3 and this is equal to 0.83 multiplied by 18 for the molecular weight for water over the molecular weight of toluene to the power 1 over 3 and the answer is 0.482 a centimeter per second okay so that is the uh, the value we can get for k if we just want to convert this to a unit of feet we are going to do our conversions and we get 0 0.0158 feet per second okay so now we got m so we got m uh, i want to calculate the area so how to calculate the area that's simple so area is equal to Pi d squared over 4, and he told us that the d is 3 feet, so that will be 3.14 pi uh, into 3 feet square uh, divided by 4, and this is equal to 27.06 feet square. Okay, great. So I already calculated area. What else? The TL that I have was equal to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Ah, it's different. It's different. So that means I need to do my calculation. This is equal to 545 Rankin and this is equal to 2303 degrees Kelvin. Okay, 
Uh, now, based on that new temperature that I have, I need to do my calculations. So limb P sat to find the saturated vapor pressure. This is equal to 16.03137 minus, okay, sorry for that, minus 3096.52 divided by the 303.303, 303, which is the temperature, uh, minus the 53.67 is the value of C, and we are going to get 3.594 and the p sat will be the saturated vapor pressure will be 36.39 millimeter mercury and this is equivalent to 0.0479 atmospheric pressure and if i want that also in psi i'm going to include it in psi a so that is 0 0.704 psi a great now after i have identified all the parameters all the values that I need, QM is equal to the 92.13, that's the molecular weight, multiplied by 0 0.0158 feet per second, and that's the K value. And because it's per second, I need to change it into minutes. And then I'm going to multiply this by the, uh, let me see, I forgot, I just forgot. We are going to multiply this by the area, okay, so the area is 7.06. So I'm going to multiply this by the area and then multiply it by the saturated vapor pressure. So it's 0 0.704 and we are going to divide this by uh, 10.73, which is the, 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 the molecular weight. Uh, is, is it the molecular weight, sorry? Uh, no, is the universal constant sorry so that is the universal constant yes 10.73 uh, multiplied by the 545 degrees Rankin and uh, after doing all our calculations we're going to get the answer as 0 0.0742 pound mass per minute okay so we obtained our QM we obtained our QM and we said that why we want to find QM because simply this is the mass flow rate. So if you if we divide mass over mass flow rate, uh, what you're going to get is the time. So this this is the time that it will evaporate, and simply we are going to do that. So we want to find the time, and the mass here the mass here is equal to so the mass was uh, forty two gallons. Uh, let me remember that. What was the mass? Yes, it was 42 gallons. So that is gallons, okay? So we need to do some kind of conversion here. Okay, so th this is the gallon. So a, a bit small conversion, we should changing it to feet. So, so that would be like 0.1337 uh, feet cube per gallon. Okay, now it's in feet cube. It's much better. And uh, because we have the answer here is in pound mass per minute, so we need also to change that into pound mass. So that will be uh, into 62 point, that will be 62.4 pound mass. Okay, uh, uh, pound mass per feet cube. So that is part of the co conversion and part of the conversion also uh, was multiplying by 0.8. 8866 okay sorry for that and you're going to get the answer as uh, oh I forgot to divide so all of this you're going to divide by what you're going to divide by uh, 0.0742 and when it was 0 0.0742 you're going to get about 4090 minutes which is equal to 68.1 hours. Okay, so that's, that's the first part of the question. That's the first part of the question. And the second part of the question was asking us, well, now, now if, uh, let me read it for you. I'm sure that maybe you have forgot it. Uh, estimate the concentration, which is the CPPM near the drum. If the ventilation rate is 1000 feet cube per minute and we have the, uh, the pressure. So the CPPM equation, 
the CPPM equation, which is equation 314. I don't know if you can recall that. So it's equation 314. CPPM equation is equal to K into A into P sat divided by the, the small k now, okay, the small k of mixing into QV multiplied by P, and that is multiplied by 10 to the power of 6. And after we are going to substitute, in substituting we are going to get uh, the, the numbers here, so it's 0 0.015, uh, 0 0.0158 feet per second, and because this is like feet per second, I'm going to multiply by 60 seconds per minute, okay? And then I'm going to multiply by the area, which is 7.06 feet square, and then I'm going to multiply by the PSAT, which is 0 0.704 PSIA, and that is multiplied by 10 to the power of 6. And this is divided by the K value. I'm going to keep the K value because I had a discussion with you that if it's well mixed or not. And then we are going to multiply by the ventilation rate, which is 1000 feet cube per minute. And then we multiply by the one atmospheric pressure, which is 14.7 PSIA. And the answer that we are going to obtain here is 321 divided by K. And now, because things are not well mixed, because if it was well mixed, we say that it's just 321 ppm, right? If it's just well mixed, then we are going to say that CPPM is going to be, be 321 ppm, and then we are going to compare that to the threshold limit value. Okay, we are going to compare that uh, with the threshold uh, limit value. What was the threshold limit value for uh, for toluene? I think we we just need to recall it. The threshold limit value for toluene was 50. Okay, now now it, it is 50. Okay, so we know the threshold limit value for toluene. Oh my god, <laughs> this is already above 50. <laughs> uh, this is already above 50, and uh, so <laughs> what to say? But considering that, uh, that if, if we have a container here and things are evaporating, if a person sitting here, definitely the concentration here will be much higher than somewhere else uh, in another place, like in another place here. Here for another person, so definitely it's not like well mixed. Uh, we, it's difficult to consider this assumption. So considering that K could be from 0.1 to 0.5, now my CPPM, my CPPM will range from will range from after substituting K value. Okay, it will range from uh, 641 ppm to 3,210 ppm. Just imagine how much, uh, how high is that concentration. Uh, it's, it's really greater than the threshold limit value and, and, and things are going to be dangerous here. Uh, great, uh, so that was the answer for uh, three, uh, that was the answer for 321. And, and I think so I'm going to add uh, the, the assignment. I'm going to add the assignment here uh, 322 uh, it's a very uh, uh, similar problem that you can solve and, uh, and, and I'm, I, I think that you need to solve it uh, by yourself so let's see if we can solve now 323 323 uh, should I solve 323 or 324 I think 323 is very simple and because it's simple I'm going to keep it as an assignment as well and I'm going to solve the, the, the difficult, the little different idea one, which is 324, 324. Okay, so let's start with 324. Going to 324, so what do I have here? 324. 324 says 55 gallon drams are being filled with two butyl exi ethanol the drums are being splash filled at the rate splash filled huh? so you remember that said that if there's a container and you're trying to fill in the container and while filling in the container okay if you can remember while filling the container you can fill it by a leg which which is dipped inside the liquid or it is splash filled so there are two things and and if it's splash filled phi is equal to 0.5 and if it's leg filled is equal to one and 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 that that was 
the idea about it and we have two kind of mass flow rates that comes from the spilling and the one uh, I mean not spilling that comes yes from the liquid that it, it is displaced or spilled into vapor and uh, the, the, the other QM which is the normal QM value and we already did the derivation and we have the equation for that. So uh, talking about 324, 55 gallon drums are filled with this compound. They are splashed at a rate of 30 drums per hour. The bung opening through which the drums are being filled have an area of eight centimeters square. So this is the place where you're trying to fill in, eight centimeters square. Uh, estimate the ambient vapor concentration uh, if the ventilation rate is 3000 feet cube per minute. The vapor pressure is 0.6 millimeter mercury under these conditions. So talking about this example, so what do we have exactly? It's like we are having some kind of, 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 of this drum. And this is the opening that we have in the drum in which we having gases, vapors leaving out. Of course, we have a QV ventilation rate, but we are having a QM as well. And there are two QMs, as we said, that there's a QM here and there's a QM that's coming out from the spilling that we have. And, uh, and uh, so th this, 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 this is the problem that we have and uh, we just can go to the equation uh, to calculate it where CPPM is equal to PSAT divided by the small k into the ventilation rate into the pressure multiplied now by two, two terms here. The first term is the uh, phi RF uh, VC which is the value of the container plus KA even though that we said that Ka can be ignored in some kind because this value, the first value is going to be higher into 10 to the power 6. Okay, so th that is the equation. So what I need, I need just to now to substitute, uh, to substitute what I have uh, for my equation. Well, the K value here, uh, well, let me go one by one. I have PSAT, but the K we want to assume it later, we see between 0.1 and 0.5. QV, we have QV, QV is equal to 3,000 3, feet cube per minute. So we have QV, we have the pressure as well. Uh, we have PSAT, PSAT is 0. 0.6. And uh, what else? Phi, we, 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 we do have phi because we can say that phi is equal to, uh, from the spilling is equal to 0. 0.5. And uh, RF into VC is the volumetric flow rate. And, and actually we already can calculate, uh, considering the information he gave us by the drum, we can calculate the filling rate and we can get the, 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 the volumetric flow rate here. And we, the K value here is not that K value, this is the capital K value, okay? So the capital K value, which is the mass diffusion coefficient, we need the molecular weight to calculate this, we can, we can calculate that K as well and then the area where we can we already have the area of that opening here okay so everything is there in hand so what we're going to what we need to know we need to calculate the the terms here the rf or the vc so what i need uh, sorry for that so what i need here is to to know these two values and to know the k value okay to do this let's start solving so the, 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 the area of the bunk, the bunk is the tank here, the area, the area of the bunk opening. Okay, we're talking about the opening is equal to eight centimeters square. <clears throat> and the filling rate we are trying to fill in, the filling rate is equal to 30 drums per hour. So that is our filling rate. What was the volume given to us? The volume is 55 gallons. Okay, 55 gallons. Uh, and, uh, uh, and these are the information that we have. What else do we have? Uh, let me see just the question here. Uh, 3024, 55 gallons, yes. And the filling rate is 30 drums per hour. Okay, so if you multiply this uh, 30 drums per hour into area we can get the volumetric flow rate okay that's good okay so we, we, we do have all our problem here so the only thing that I'm left with is the K how to calculate K uh, so K is equal to K naught 
into m naught over m to the power one over three. To, to do this calculation, this is equal to 2.83 into 18 over the molecular weight of that compound, which is 118 to the power one over three. This is equal to 2.443 centimeter per second. Uh, okay, and if I want to do some kind of a conversion to show that in an hour, so that will be like 52.3 feet per hour. Okay, and for the for the splash filling, uh, it just looks like I forgot. Phi is equal to one for flash splitting for splash filling. Uh, uh, for uh, splash filling, <laughs> I, I just confused. Okay, for that, for that is for the splash filling. Okay, so we have that, and RF, of course, we already mentioned that it's 30 drums per hour. Okay, it's just the filling rate. Uh, so just substitute. So the CPPM is equal to CPPM is equal to 0.6. Uh, the PSAT multiply <clears throat> before multiplying we need to convert this so just converting it uh, we need to convert this 0 0.6 milligrams uh, sorry milli milli mercury so that is 760 millimeter mercury okay and then you're going to multiply by the rest which is 1 multiply by 30 drums per hour RF okay so that is so that is uh, RF which is 30 drums per hour and then we are multiplying that by 55 gallons that's the volume VC per drum and of course uh, this is multiplied by 0.1337 uh, per gallon multiplied by 0.1337 per gallon so, uh, so this is the first part of the equation, uh, the head uh, at the top, it ju I just wanted to show it to you. So PSAT multiplied by five, which is one, this is the uh, filling rate, 30 drums per hour into v v the VC that we have, and we just do the, our conversion factors. Divided by K, we will keep K. Ventilation is going to 3000 MP is the pressure that we already have uh, as well. So th this will be divided by this will be divided by uh, the k small k. I have a problem having the small k drawing it. Uh, multiply by q v, which is three thousand feet q per minute. And of course, I want to convert this minutes per to hours. So sixty minutes in one hour, and then it is multiplied by p, which is one atmospheric pressure. And and that's not it. That's not it, right? Oh my God, I, I have mixed things up. Okay, because this 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 term that is, uh, if you just go at the top there, P sat over K Q V P. So P sat over K Q V P. This is multiplied by this plus one more term, and that one more term is K. Okay, K. Uh, which is which was feet per hour multiplied by the area which is eight centimeters square and this this was this was like feet per hour and eight centimeters square and this is multiplied uh, and just uh, and that's all I this is what we have we just need to do some kind of of fixing this eight centimeters square uh, by a kind of a conversion factor and that's all we just multiply by that 10 to the power 6 and just to make sure about the term here and just to make sure about the term here i just wanted to show it to you go at the top it's k multiplied by a okay so we multiplied k into a at last the answer is 0.967 divided by k the small k and because k could be from 0.1 till 0.5 CPPM is equal to 9.67, it will range from 9.67 to 1.93 ppm. And we compare this with the threshold limit value just to see things are going fine or not. So the, the, this is the question that we have. Uh, a very similar question for that is 325. If 
325 uh, filling uh, filling a, ga a gasoline in your car which is a container and actually it's also a nice question and I will keep that to you and there is a threshold limit value of 300 ppm for that question and, and it will be a good challenge for you to see if that concentration exceeds for a person who's filling that gasoline if it exceeds or it does not exceed the limit okay so that's a good question that you need to see and and calculate a final part of the question uh, of the problems that we are going to solve the, the last question which we will try to solve here is uh, 326 we are going to try to solve uh, 326 and uh, 326 is a very uh, short problem and easy and straightforward so uh, now we are talking about this bunk that we have so if we have a 6 inch diameter elephant trunk to remove the contaminants that we have near that open bunk of a drum during a filling operation so we have a ventilation like an exhaust that's pulling out the contaminants the air velocity required at the end of the elephant trunk is 100 feet per minute what is the volumetric flow rate? And here the volumetric flow rate is our ventilation QV, uh, volumetric flow rate. And we know that the volumetric flow rate, flow rate is equal to the area multiplied by the velocity. So we have the velocity, which is 100 feet per minute, and we have the diameter where we can calculate the area, we just multiply them. It's as simple as that. So for 326, we just say that QV is area multiplied by velocity and this area is pi d square over 4 multiplied by velocity and this is equal to 3.14 into 6 inch square and because it's an inch square we need to just do our conversion 12 square uh, inch square and uh, we multiply by velocity and the velocity is 100 feet per minute 100 feet per minute and uh, so this is 100 and f uh, feet per minute so wh what else we have so th this is what we have as an information uh, so uh, to remove the contaminant the air velocity complete the volumetric flow rate uh, so if you do that if you do that you will get uh, you'll get the answer in feet cube per minute uh, in feet cube per minute and let me do this for you uh, in a moment uh, I'm doing my calculations and my calculations show that this is equal to 78.4 feet cube per minute okay so this is the way how we calculated uh, calculated it that's all what we have uh, I thank you very much and uh, this is the solution of, of, uh, of all the problems that we had. Uh, and what else? Uh, uh, if, if, if you want to go into more details, uh, there's one thing that we, I had left here, uh, is that uh, we usually used to calculate the ventilation rate uh, based on the K values. So we do consider K values if you want something in average or not, depending on the and on the on the ppm values so here we are just considering that what is the qv but if you want to to go into the details of it you just remember that uh, we 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 went through the qv values if you go up there you're going to see that uh, this is the way how we calculate qv of course we know that but we just want to show you the values of that tables yeah so that is the table in which depending on the concentration that we have Okay, depending on what the concentration that we have, we select the value of the mixing factor. Okay, so now concentrating, uh, uh, considering what ventilation rate I do have, I calculated it as 78.4, as 78.4, but uh, it will be different if, if, if I'm talking about different ventilate conditions. Okay, for, so, so it could be that because of the different ventilation conditions that I have, depending on what I have here. For, so for example, it's over 500 ppm and I want an average ventilation condition. So that will be one over four. And our answer will be, uh, will be uh, differing, will be differing. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that part of the question. And uh, if you can see here, 
how they calculated uh, the, the, the area multiplied by the control velocity that we have, the control velocity we have. So this is something that I would like to, to mention. Something else before I leave you uh, here, the air velocity required at the end of the elephant tank is 100 feet uh, per minute. And actually this is the end of the elephant tank. Is, it this, is this velocity uniform uh, or not? This is something else to consider and, and we may also have a less value uh, of ventilation because of the, of the because we are measuring the air velocity at the end of the of the uh, of the tank. So this is something else that we should also consider, uh, and we may have a different answer uh, ju just because of uh, this uh, these numbers. This, this is all that we need to talk about uh, for our problems. I hope that you have gained a lot. We had done a very good job. We had uh, done a very good job uh, for solving many problems. Uh, hope for the best. And uh, thank you very much. And see you in our next problems. I like to end up this with a happy face. And uh, okay, so this is a happy face. And this is my hair. <laughs> okay, so I hope that you have enjoyed my time and you like to enjoy my beautiful picture for my daughter at the end of this picture. All the best. Thank you very much. See you.